Welcome back to my record collection. Glad you made it. Um, today we're going to start with where we stopped last time, which is the letter M. There we go. Um, first of all is Orgasmatron by Motorhead. It's one of them. Well, I mean, the cover is well known, but the record itself isn't, I think, the most well known Motorhead album. I am not the biggest Motorhead fan, but I, you have to just adore uh, Lemmy Kilmer, so you have to. He's just such an icon, such a cultural icon. Next thing, Steve Miller's Steve Miller Band, Flying Like an Eagle. An album that I got handed down by my mother as well, which I'm very, very proud of because Steve Miller and the Steve Miller Band are very, very good musicians. Sometimes me and my girlfriend do like evenings where we just like drink a few uh, drinks, like gin tonic or whatever. We're gonna play some games, like card games, stuff like that, and we're gonna listen to some music. And this is one of the albums that is gonna get thrown on regularly. Next one. Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm allowed to show that. <laughs> Let's just keep something uh, on on top of it, which is a children's book, um, which is Nirvana's Nevermind. Um, sorry, it's YouTube, so I have to be a little bit careful. Um, which is Nirvana's Nevermind, one of the most influential albums of all time. I will make a video about Nirvana um, in, 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 in a little bit, not now, but in a little bit. German musician, but more a comedian, but he's still a good musician. Uh, he's called Otto, and this is O Otto, and this is Hilfe Otto kommt, which means something like, help, Otto's coming. Um, I think I will not go into more detail, because the joke will lose the joke if we translate it, so... Yeah. The Alan Parson Project Pyramid, um, an album that I got from my father as well, and he has seen Alan Parson live a few times. Alan Parson, obviously, also the one who um, engineered Dark Side of the Moon, which we're going to get to next. Which isn't that a great transcription? Isn't that a great transcription? Um, next album, a nice pair by Pink Floyd, um, which features their first two records. We're not going to talk about this one longer because I do own both of their first records. Pink Floyd's Relics, older songs, live versions, and a little bit of um, lost recordings, you could say, of Astronomy to Mine, and you careful with Alex Eugene, see Emily play, and stuff like that. Pink Floyd's a great collection, a collection of great dance songs, um, which includes a new version of Money, which David Gilmore solo recorded, like mostly solo recorded in the studio, because they had some kind of dispute with their label, I think, and they couldn't use the old version on this thing. Um, it's got, I think it is sheep that it's got on here as well. Yeah, it's sheep. And this is a record where I really got to love sheep and I really got to love animals, but we're gonna to come to that in a second. Next thing, Amagama. Um, half studio album, half live album. Um, from all of the great albums that Pink Floyd has done, which they are all great. Um, this is, I think, my least favorite, but still it is a Pink Floyd record, so it's, it's, it's an amazingly good record. Like, there is no doubt about that. Metal, otherwise known as the album that contains Echoes. Um, you could say it's the birthplace of Pink Floyd's modern sound, or modern sound that they would carry through the 70s. And I think I've said exactly this sentence um, in my Pink Floyd rating all the record video. Pink Floyd, a source of full of secrets, including set the controls for the heart of the sun, source of full of secrets, um, and jug band blues, which is written by Sid Barrett. The last Sid Barrett thing to ever be featured on a Pink Floyd studio release. Pink Floyd's Atom Heart Mother. Um, Atom Heart Mother has a special place in my heart. I really like Atom Heart Mother. I'm a big fan of the album and the title track itself. And I like the cover art, the cows. They're good. Piper at the Gates of Dawn. The Sid Barrett record. And oh my god, is it a good one. Oh my god, is it a good one. Um, it is really a different sound than the band um, managed to create later on. But different doesn't mean worse. It is just just so good like Sid Barrett is just such a uh, has been such a good musician and it's such a sad story or his life is such a sad story and well but that's how music goes sometimes before I have to stand up the last one um of the wall the greatest concept album of all time hands down um songs like comfortably numb um run like hell hey you bring the boys back home um all of them are <laughs> Amazing. The art of Gerald Scarf is amazing, and the entire musicality of the band is amazing. But getting a musicality, give me a second. Oops. Um, there are three records always on display. Well, actually, there are nine, but three Pink Floyd records. One of them is my favorite record of all time, which is Animals. Um, 
Dogs is my favorite Pink Floyd song and presumably my favorite song of all time. And this record just makes such a, he's, he's, he's such, so good in displaying the, our society, I think. Really got a place in my heart. Dark Side of the Moon, speaking of it from Alec, Alan Parson, um, the Pink Floyd record. If you think about Pink Floyd, you would most, most likely have this image in your head. And yeah, it's next to Abbey Road, the best known album cover of all time, and one of the best albums of all time, also next to Abbey Road. My first ever vinyl record, Wish You Were Here. I got this handed down to my mother as well. Years, years, years before I would buy another um, record. Years, years, years before I would buy a record player. But still, it is one of my favorite albums of all time. Presumably even my second favorite album of all time. The next one, um, Pesco, Jade, which is another German band, um, which is straight punk rock. Like, straight up punk rock. My girlfriend showed them to me, and they are really good. Like, listen to them if you haven't, I mean, you presumably haven't listened to them because you presumably aren't German. Even if you are German, you will presumably not have listened to them. Next one, next band is Placebo with their MTV Unplugged, which is the heaviest album that I've ever seen in my life. Do they put bricks in there? Um, my girlfriend loves Placebo. I do really like Placebo and I've seen them live once, I think with her as well. Yeah, they were in a festival, at a festival. But I'm a fan of Unplugged and I'm a fan of Placebo, so this is going to be a good one, obviously. With You Are Nothing, Placebo as well, obviously. Um... Yeah, Pure Morning, songs like that on here. Very good record and very good modern rock band. The Police. Um, Synchronicity. I am not the biggest Police fan, I have to say that. I just bought it because it was an album that you should own and you should listen to. So, yeah, I like them. Definitely know that about that. They're great musicians. Sting is a great musician. And um, obviously, um, Mr. Copeland is a great musician. Actually, a ridiculously good musician. But I just couldn't really find my way into them. Maybe I will uh, in maybe I will say in a few years. You know, I all, all those years I just didn't get the band. But all right, next one. Um, Purple Schulz und die neue Heimat haut nah. Um, a German musician with his band. Like Purple Schulz is a musician and he has got his band around him. And on here is a song called Sehnsucht. And the song is so sad. It's, it is about a child getting um, abused by its mother, and he just—he doesn't know what he wants, but he just wants to—he wants out. He just wants to go out, and that is such a, such a sad thing. But the song is really, really good, and the album is really, really good as well. We are actually getting closer to the end now. I can't believe it. Um, let's start with the last row of records, which starts out with a band that you will all love. And if you don't love them, why you don't love them? Queen, A Night at the Opera, including the song Bohemian Rhapsody. I don't have to say anything more about this record, I suppose. Next one, my favorite Queen album, which is News of the World. Um, yeah, News of the World is just my favorite Queen album. I am a huge Queen, a Queen, 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 Queen. I am a huge uh, Queen fan. Not as much as I should be, but you, you just have to love, especially Freddie Mercury for his... Um, Ridiculous voice. Ridiculously good, obviously. Dancing on the Head of the Serpent by Raza, or Raze. Um, a album that I got from my father. It is obviously an Indian-inspired or Hindu-inspired. Next, one of my favorite albums of all time, undoubtedly. Um, the Red Hot Chili Peppers with Californication. Songs like Californication, Other Side, Scar Tissue, all on here. And <laughs> it took me a few years to get into the Chili Peppers, but... The second I got into them, I was, yeah, definitely one of my uh, number one priority live bands that I want to see. Oh, no, there are two records, actually. Um, Rise Against, with Rise Against Wolves, their latest studio album. I think it's much better than The Black Market. Anything I want to say? My Girlfriend Loves the next one, which is um, The Ghost Note Symphonies, Volume 1. So I hope there's going to be more, which has songs like Savior and uh, The Violence made on acoustic, which is great. The Ramones. The Ramones. Nothing more to say about the Ramones. They are amazing. <laughs> one of the pioneers in punk rock and Blitzkrieg Bop is obviously one of the best known songs of all time, I suppose. But next band, I do own two records of, which are the Rolling Stones. Um, first of all, I do own um, Made in the Shade, which I think does have Angie on it. Yes, and it has Angie on it, and that is the reason why my mother bought it. The next one is something that I'm going to put the price tag off because it's still on handwritten, obviously, because it's a used record. I'm just going to put that somewhere here. Yeah, this is an original copy of Sticky Fingers, a German copy. I'm not going to tell you what I paid for it. Um, 
even the zipper works but actually it's it's ripped a little bit here is a little bit missing of a cover but it's still a very very good album and it's next to exile on main street presumably the most well-known um, Rolling Stones record Something that I got to my birthday this year, or last year, Slash, Miles and Kennedy and the Conspirators with Word on Fire. Um, I bought this record on a CD when it came out back in 2014. Right after work, my dad picked me up, brought me to a store and I bought it. Um, yeah, this is how much I adore this record. Songs like Too Far Gone and Bent to Fly are so good. And they really speak to me, but this is just, this is just me. Simon and Garfunkel. <sighs> Life at Central Park. I wasn't able to find a very good copy of another Simon and Garfunkel album, even though I enjoy them very much. I've actually seen Art Garfunkel live at the end of 2019, which was the birthday present that I gave to my mother. And she enjoyed the concert as well. Very, very good. It was in Hamburg as well. Bob Seger's and the Silver Bullet Band, Stranger in Town. Um, yeah, what do I have to say about Bob Seger? Absolutely cultural icon and a classically good musician. Like, really, really good. Uh, never mind the bollocks, here are the Sex Pistols, which is obviously a Sex Pistols record, which is a groundbreaking punk record, which you just should just own. They aren't my favorite band of the first three, four punk bands that you would consider, but they definitely got their place in music, so they've got their place in the record collection. Mike Shinoda's Post Traumatic. I've talked about Chester Bennington for a little bit of Linkin Park, and I've seen Mike live with this album um, in 2018 in Hamburg. And it was a very good concert. Don Broker was the was the opening gig, which was great. But yeah, I like I said, Linkin Park has a special meaning to me, and so this album does have as well. This is a fairy tale. Cat Stevens, um, T for the Tillerman. I wouldn't I wouldn't say the, but one of the favorite albums of my mother. I actually got it from her as well. I'm gonna do it. My mother loves this record, so I enjoy it as well. And this is obviously a very good record, just hands down. Saturday Night Fever. My girlfriend wanted this one and I bought it fairly cheap. Actually, you can, I mean, there are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of um, them made. So, yeah, it's just a very, very good upbeat album. It is like a soundtrack, obviously, not an album. Next one, one you will presumably not have heard of Sons of Hans, a stoner metal rock album, I don't know, with um, While Sleeping Stay Awake. I've said a little bit about this one in the Vinyl Tech video as well. Recently found them. Definitely um, check them out if you like a little bit harder music. Steppenwolf, Steppenwolf, Born to be Wild um, is on here as well. So yeah, I, I found this one in the, I, I think it was in, in my favorite record store, which I usually go to, which, is, which, which we'll just call Tom's Store. And there were tables with crates on them, which you could dig through. And there was a table with a crate on and two crates in front of it. And I pulled them away, and, uh, and behind there, there was a crate, and there was like five albums in it, and this was one of them. And I bought it, obviously. Do not do that. Not to the boss. Bruce Springsteen. Well, we'll start a chronological order, which would be this. Born to Run. Arguably his best record ever. Um, not in my opinion, I do like a different favorite, but this is a really, really good album, nonetheless. Um, yeah, Thunder Road, Born to Run. Absolute boss classic. My favorite record and one of my favorite records of all time. My favorite Bruce Springsteen record and one of my favorite records of all time. Darkness on the Edge of Town, including songs like Adam Raised the Cane, Streets on Fire, Racing in the Streets, and the title track. There is so much sadness in this album that I really can feel. If, if, I'm, if I'm in a bad mood um, and I, I listen to songs like Racing in the Streets, it really feels like kind of comfy, I'd say. Born in the USA, Bruce Springsteen. One of the most misunderstood songs in, in, in his career, I think, and one of the best albums in his career. Super Tramp, famous last words. One of the lesser known Super Tramp albums, Super Tramp is a band that I've, I've never listened to anything that sounds like Super Tramp. It, there is only Super Tramp that sounds like Super Tramp. And that is something that is really amazing. My dad saw them live and they were a stadium staple in um, in the 70s and one of the best bands that I've ever seen. Like, so I, I obviously I haven't seen them live, but one of the best bands I've ever listened to. They are so good and I have to stand up for the next records. And on we go with Super Tramp and there we do have Super Trump's Crisis. What Crisis? The most underrated Super Trump album of all time it is so, 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 so good. And even the band um, doesn't give it the credit that it should have, I think. Uh, at least it feels like that. But very, very good. 
Yeah, I think the second most known algorithm, even the quietest moments, including School, which is, I think, still my favorite song from them, next to the Logical song. My dad gave this to me. It is just such a good album, and this brought me into Supertron. My girlfriend actually become, became a gigantic fan of them. What could it be? Breakfast in America. It is their best record and one of the best records ever made. If you haven't listened to Breakfast in America, you really miss out on something. It's just as easy as it gets. The Logical song is on there. Breakfast in America is on there. It's just so, so good. A little bit more Supertramp to come. Yeah. Um, Supertramp self-titled. Um, yeah. Another thing. Just you, I, I just want to own every Supertramp album. Did I, by the way, say that School is on... Um, even the quietest moments, which is rubbish. Um, even on the quietest moments, definitely not has school on it. Um, even in the quietest moments, um, which has give a little bit on it, I think. Yeah, in the first, like I said, has school, which is rubbish, and has give a little bit on it, um, because the one record that has school on it is this one, Crime of the Century. Like again, amazing album and one of the first albums that comes into mind when talking about Super Trump. This is a German band again. They are called Die Toten Hosen, which means like the dead trousers, but it's a German wordplay, so um, fair enough. Auf dem Kreuzzug und Slug on the Crusade into the Luck, um, which is a compilation thing. It's called 125 years, but it's obviously just 25 years. So yeah, that's it. And one of the best and better known records, which is Ein kleines bisschen Horror Show, a little bit of a horror show, which has songs like Alex on. Two percent really not new because you are not German. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're talking again. Um, this is one of my favorite bands of all time, and it is, and this band is called Uriah Heep. We've got Innocent Victim, which is just a $2 record, which looks amazing, and it's got, and it's got um, Keep On Riding and Free Me on it. Next one, um, Uriah Heep, Look At Yourself, with a mirror that actually works, and this is an original copy, which I'm very proud of. And now the next two, which are my favorite, of, my favorite albums of them. Um, one of them is The Magician's Birthday. Amazing cover art and amazing album in general. Actually, if you haven't listened to that much, you are heap, go and listen to it. And Demons and Wizards, my favorite album of them. And one of the favorite albums of all time, at least for me. I've talked about this one again in the vinyl tag video quite a little bit. So I'll just keep it on that. And we are actually coming to a close. I'm going to put them all on my on my lap now. The Who, with Who's Next, an album that took me quite a while to find, but it's in a very, very good condition. And there is still the store that sold it back in the days, um, which is in Hamburg, with a um, postcode that doesn't even exist anymore. Postcodes were four letters long, like 40 years ago. Now they're five letters long. So, yeah. Um, yeah, Who's Next is the best The Who record, in my opinion, take, hands down. Baba O'Reilly, nothing more I need to say. Speaking of The Who and Pinball Wizard, Tommy. This is actually, I'm gonna put this out, come on. I, I like to show this record, I really, really like to show this. Um, this is the trifold version of Tommy, which is not that hot, not that easy to find, I think. Um, I think my screen is too small, I'm just gonna go over here. Um, yeah, this is, this is just a really, really good album. It is the, the Who at their best, and nothing more to say about that, it's just the Who at their best. Now, I think the best pop record of all time, and yes, I've said that even if I had um, Michael Jackson in here, which is Songs in the Key of Life by Stevie Wonder. Two LPs and a seven inch single, and it's stacked of classics, like stacked of absolute classics. Give it a listen if you haven't. This is one of the most important records to ever be released, in my opinion, and actually not just in my opinion, it, is, it has been one of the most influential albums of all time. The Wonder Years, Burst of Decay. Um, same thing like the Ghost Note Symphonies. This is a record consisting of already released songs in acoustic by The Wonder Years. Um, very, very good. There was actually a second one out there, which I should buy. Yesterday by Yes. Yeah, you can't do anything wrong with Yes. Yes is just amazing. And the same can be said for 91502. Is this right? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Nine, uh, 90125. It's right, yeah, it's right. And very, very good non album of them. Obviously, somebody put his put his letters on there, but that's fairly fine. Another one with Y. Neil Young, Zuma, Crazy Horse. Anything to say about Neil Young hasn't been said? No. 
marvelous musician, marvelous songwriter, and ridiculously talented musician. And the last record, I can't believe it. It is the last one. ZZ Top's Afterburner, <laughs> also from my dad. Yeah, I'm one of the persons that really loves ZZ Top, like really, really. My favorite record of all of them is definitely Animals by Pink Floyd. And we really made this in about an hour of, we're well, taping about an hour and 15. Let's see how many videos we get out of them. I'm very, very glad you stuck through that. Bye-bye.